Hey everybody and welcome. Welcome back to my channel. I know it has been a little while since we had a video and to be honest in general for the last year or so content production has just definitely been slow right compared to the last whatever nine years before that and so today I wanted to just sit down and have a chat just give you like a nice little update on my life what's been kind of going on this channel where the channel's going and I also thought I might give you a bit of a language learning update too because I know a lot of you have been writing to me asking like are you still learning languages like is this a thing what's going on <laughs> so just want to like sit down and have a chat because you know so many of you have supported me for such a long time and there's also a lot of new people who are still like finding me through my old videos and it only seems fair to just keep you in the loop and like what's going on. And I will say everything is positive, right? Every single thing I'm gonna share today is really exciting. So don't worry, I'm not gonna do one of those like channel update videos where it's got like a sad thumbnail and it looks like it's, it's is it the end? Like, no, we are just getting started, trust me. So let's just jump in. And I wanna tell you a little story. I think this is just the best way to hopefully explain like where we are, how we got here, and what's about to happen on this channel. So I want to take you back to, I think it was April 2014, certainly around that time. So nine years ago, a little over nine years ago. And I uploaded a video called Home. It's a short documentary piece about my search for home in the world and my life in Japan. And that is currently the oldest video that is public on my channel. Now, my first video was back in 2008, <laughs> uh, but I think that video was sort of a rebirth of my channel. And if you go and watch that video, what you will see, if you really pay attention, is you'll see a kid that has like almost no money. I mean, was, I was literally homeless when I published that video. <laughs> um, not much equipment. I had, I had like a reasonable little like super low end DSLR that I got with like a student loan and an old lens from the 1960s, no lights, nothing, not even a tripod. But you'll see a kid in that position, still in college, that really tried to make a film. There's a lot of problems with it. There's a ton of stuff I could <laughs> critique about it. There's a whole section in the middle that I wish I had never done where I start speaking different languages. But it's really clear when I look at that video now, which I didn't do for a long time, like I was really, really giving it everything I had to make a short documentary film. I'm experimenting with all sorts of different angles and different types of shots, different focal lengths, like zooming in, zooming out, narrative voice, non-linear editing and storytelling, like taking you back and forth through time. I'm trying to like infuse a positive message in there, be a little philosophical. You know, like there's so much going on from a filmmaking perspective that regardless of how good it was, I really, really tried. And at that moment, given the incredibly limited skill and experience that I had, I could take a step back and say like, that was my very best work that I could possibly hope to produce. It took months. It took like a hundred hours probably or more. I mean, I had no business trying to make that kind of a production, but I just wanted to do it so badly. And so I share that with you because that video came out of a pretty rough time. Back in 2011, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was a junior in college and I was like recovering all alone from this surgery, very dark, cold winter in North Carolina. And that's when I discovered the world of like short documentary film. There was a really beautiful community on a website called Vimeo, which back then was a lot smaller. And it was just filmmakers like sharing their short films about different people from different walks of life, different ideas. And like, I would sit down and I would, I would get up after watching one of these videos in a better place. I would be feeling warmer, more cozy, more hopeful, more positive, more determined. Like it was this magical period of a few months as I was recovering where like I discovered the incredible power that film has to alter our mental state, alter our outlook on the world. 
in a more positive way if done well. And that was just the most exciting thing in the world to me at the time. And that's when I decided I wanted to be a filmmaker. And I spent the next three years <laughs> studying filmmaking. This is a long time ago that you didn't have like all these online courses like you do today. Uh, you didn't have all these filmmaking YouTube channels, like this plethora of information at your fingertips. This is a very different time. And so bringing it back full circle to that video, that was like the result of three years of just trying just whatever I could. So I tell you this story because if you were to, which you shouldn't do this, this would take a long time. If you were to go and watch the next like 150 videos or 200 videos on my channel over the following seven years after that, you would not see a single video like that. Seven years. <laughs> and what happened is basically life got insane, right? A lot of you might know these, these things if you followed me for a while. Like my life was crazy for a while. I was moving around different countries, like doing odd jobs, being homeless, like just trying to survive, trying to pay the bills, trying to figure out a way to like create a more sustainable, stable life. And it was just, was just hard. And so the last thing I could think about was these kind of incredible like <laughs> projects with these like, you know, multi-month productions. Like I just really wanted to share my positive energy and help people learn languages. And so my YouTube channel just became about that. And it was super special. And like, as I grew like a little bit of an audience and some of like, I would have these same like 10 people commenting on every video. Even when I just had like a hundred views per video, I'd get these 10 comments that were just so positive and letting me know like how, how much the videos were impacting them and encouraging them. And I'm like, I have to keep doing this. Like this, this is what creating is about, you know? And so I had a great time making videos for like a long, long time. But I bring this all up because during that time, I had, I had not really been watching YouTube anymore. I was just so focused on making videos and then outside of that, trying to survive, <laughs> that like I had not really kept up with the platform. And at a certain point, I started watching videos again and I realized how much things had changed. And while even today, it's still relatively uncommon, but I realized there are people making the kind of stuff that I always wanted to make and that I'd kind of started to think was just not possible for me. You know, there were people who were making like cinematic stuff and bringing that to like a YouTube format, right? People making documentary style things, explainers and video essays and like the quality had just been increasing and increasing. You had this explosion of people sharing like knowledge of filmmaking and storytelling and all, all these other topics. like. At a certain point, I realized there are people who are doing the stuff that like I always wanted to do all those years ago. And it started to hit me that like I had really gone away from that. And I, I had almost just like forgotten this dream of being a filmmaker. I certainly increased the quality over the years. I always tried to be a little bit ahead of the curve on things like that. But there's a huge difference from just having good image quality and good audio and, you know, put, paying attention to these things versus like what I would think of as like true filmmaking, which doesn't have to be making a giant film. I think it, it, there is a lot involved, but it, a lot of it's just about the effort and the intent behind it, right? Like I said, that first video I made in 2014 wasn't the best film by any stretch, but there's a very clear intent, you know, to tell a story, to move somebody a little bit in a positive direction. So. This is all to say, I lost sight of my, my dream, I think. Um, maybe for good reason, D did a lot of stuff in that time. But I, in 2021, I kind of realized at a certain point that like, I wanna go back to that. Like this is, there's something missing, you know? I made hundreds of videos that wasn't really that proud of from a production standpoint, right? Um, they weren't my best work. Maybe they were the best I could do in that moment, but they weren't my best work. And so I started trying to come back, you know, to filmmaking. I became a student of the craft again. I started taking courses. And you'll see if you look at my YouTube channel, there's a playlist of short documentary pieces. And they start appearing again uh, late 2021. And um, it was really, really cool. It was magical. I got that feeling again of like, 
each one of those pieces, when I finished it, it felt like my best work. It felt so exciting to publish. I was so happy and the response was so warm. And it was like, I'm back, I'm back on track. You know, I'm heading towards that, that dream that I had all along. But the thing is like, those things are really hard. <laughs> those things are really hard. And I kept like pushing myself higher and higher. And it's just scary. These things are really, really scary to make. It's hard to put yourself out there and, and try to make something really special that you just don't know how it's gonna turn out. So once I moved back to the Bay and I got a full-time job again, and that sort of takes us to the very recent history, I was really battling with two things. You know, it's like I have less time than ever to make films and videos for YouTube, but I am more determined and excited and passionate than ever in my life about finally pursuing my original dreams and making films that I'm really, really proud of and that feel like my best work and that I hope will just like put positive energy out there in the same way that those short documentaries I was watching back in 2011 did for me. It's just a hard thing. Those two things don't usually go together. <laughs> the people who I love to watch who make beautiful filmic kind of videos on, on YouTube, they mostly do this full time. And frankly, I keep learning more and more of them actually have like teams of people who also work on this full time. It's just a really hard thing to do if you wanna really, really do it well. But I'm just too excited about it and too determined that like this is what I should be doing with my creative time. And so that's why you haven't seen a lot of content because I've just been trying to figure out what that's gonna look like and how I can do this in a way that just works with my current situation. And it's taken a while. But what I can tell you is I have just been working on this nonstop. Uh, you may think like from, from looking at my output, you may think I've just gotten bored of YouTube or just gotten busy with my new life back here in San Francisco, but that could not be further from the truth. The last year, I have worked on YouTube every single day, you know? Um, I have spent so much time on this. I'm thinking about it all the time. This is more important to me than ever, you know? But it's just that I've been studying, I've been practicing, I've been experimenting, learning, you know? Like, and it's just kind of grown and grown and grown. And now I finally kind of know what I want to make, but it's just uh, the things I want to make are really hard. <laughs> so to give you an idea of the things I've been learning and studying, um, obviously within editing, you know, there is an enormous amount of stuff and it's, it's the whole like bedrock of creating visual stories like this. But within that, there's so many different techniques and subtopics. You've got things like sound design, which is a, a huge topic in itself but can completely alter the viewing experience of watching a film. You know, you've got different visual effects. You've got all sorts of things like storytelling itself, right? That is a huge topic that I have been studying a lot, especially visual storytelling and different levels of storytelling. There are things like animation, which is a whole huge skill set that I have been diving into and I am obsessed with now. I absolutely love it. You know, if you've ever watched videos from people like Vox, right, you'll see that like, that's a great example of using beautifully executed animations and motion design to like completely augment a story, right? And facilitate sharing information and making it more digestible and more interesting and more pleasing, right? And so I've been literally studying animation. I just finished a course. I'm about to start another course, <laughs> which is gonna be three more months. And um, so I could go on and on, but obviously even within shooting, right? There's lighting. Lighting is a massive topic. There's color grading, which goes back to editing. You know, there's composition. There are pieces of equipment I've been learning how to use like gimbals and drones, sliders, I could go on and on and on, but these are all things I've been studying relentlessly for the last year. And um, I'm just so excited. I am currently working on my first new short documentary film. 
and I'm super excited. I've been working on it for five weeks already. And I would say each of these new films I'm working on are, are going to be at least 100 hours each, possibly more. <laughs> so these are not small things. And these are very difficult things to produce while working a full-time job. I still run Journaly. And we've, been, we've actually been creating a bunch of new stuff on Journaly. It's been, like a, it's been a really good year uh, for Journaly. So it's a lot, but I love it. I absolutely love it. I love it so much. And I am like just so excited about finally doing this. But that brings us to right now. Like, where are we? And I'm sorry this has actually been a lot longer than I expected. But like, I've tried so many times to explain this to my Patreon supporters. I've been making videos on Patreon every single week for this entire time. Um, so if you do want to see <laughs> weekly updates on what I'm up to, Patreon is still... Um, a great place for that. I just started the podcast again on Patreon. So I've still been doing that. Um, but like, I just, it's been hard to explain it in any succinct way. So I wanted to do that here the best I could. And so where we are now is I think I'm finally at a place where I know what I want to make. I have learned a ton in the last year and it's getting to that point now where I'm starting to gain some confidence and actually get some practice with all these new skills and things I've been learning. And I'm like actually doing it. Like I said, I'm, I'm making a short documentary film. It includes everything from animations, which I've been doing myself after learning from these courses. It includes interviews. I'm actually traveling to Austin, Texas to interview a professor to get some like expertise and infuse different stories into the video. Like, I'm really, really doing it, but I just need a bit more time. Um, but in the meantime, I've realized like I can still keep making content, right? Because you deserve it and I like doing it and it's been way too long, right? Like so many of you have been so kind to support me over the years and it's a shame to go such a long time without content. So what I'm going to do is we have this video now and... Um, I have a few ideas for some nice little videos I can make. Um, one about language learning that's been on my head for a while. Uh, a lot of you have been asking for a video about how I became a software engineer at Google without any formal training. So I could do that if you want. Um, a bunch of new language learning stuff that could be fun. Like, I guess what I'm saying is until now, I've just been taking the approach of like, you know, I just need time. I need time because I want every video to be something I'm so proud of. And that's still the goal. But like I say, I just need a bit more time. And so in the meantime, uh, I want to still share some, some content with you. So I hope you enjoy like getting up to speed and, and finally knowing what's been going on and where I've been and like what's going to happen going forward. I, I hope that at some point in the relatively near future, my channel will just become a place where I'm just sharing, like maybe not as often, but sharing hopefully like beautiful little short film pieces that that you kind of just know when, when I publish a video, it's worth getting a drink, making some time to sit down. It's gonna be worthwhile and you're gonna come away like feeling positive, feeling a little warmer, a little, you know, a little cozy. I'm not sure how to describe it, but like I, like I said, I just, I want to make stuff that, that hopefully gives you the feeling that I used to get when I would sit down and watch those pieces back in 2011, such a long time ago. Um, but in the meantime, in the meantime, I want to get back to at least sharing some videos and engaging with all of you again. So uh, you'll see a few videos coming out in the next few weeks. I also think I'm going to share a video I made back in 2021 that I only shared with Patreon supporters um, because the, the the video was a bit blurry, but it was kind of a nice video. And it, it's funny how things actually turned out after that. So I'm going to share that with you. Basically, you'll see some videos coming out while I get this other stuff figured out. And I'll let you know once, once it's time to kind of shift gears to my new style of content. And my goal is to be consistent again. So I may not be posting as often as I used to, but I do want to finally get back to being able to 
produce consistently so you know what to expect and when videos are coming out. So, all right, that was a bit longer than I expected, like I said, um, but I hope this just helps to kind of clear things up. Hope this gets you updated. You know, I have been learning languages this whole entire time. I've mostly been learning Mandarin. It's going super well. I'm, I'm really excited about my progress. It's, it's just been a delight. Um, and I think my Mandarin is now getting to a really exciting place. I think the next year is gonna be very exciting for Mandarin Chinese. But I've also finally been kind of getting back into a little bit of Spanish, a little bit of French, a little bit of Italian. Like it's, it's like I've, you know, most of my language learning time has been devoted to Mandarin. Uh, it's been like almost five years now that I've been doing that because uh, it takes a long time. And as many of you will know, what I like doing is really reaching very high levels of fluency. And it just takes a long time. And since I've been spending so much time <laughs> on all these other things. I've just like, I've only really been able to dedicate myself to that one language. But now that that's like starting to get to those more advanced levels, it's, it's getting there. I think this next year is, is gonna be like, oh, it's gonna be exciting. Um, I'm starting to see like a light at the end of the tunnel where I can actually start folding back in these other languages and start bringing them back up to the levels they used to be at. And I'm not going to add in any, any new languages for a while. And so I can finally get back to being more just like in maintenance mode. And I would really love to make some films about languages in the future. And, you know, maybe some stuff that's more like showing actually being out there in the world using different languages. And, you know, making films about what languages mean to me and what they mean to other people. I, I don't know, you get the point. It's like rather than the how to do this or five ways to improve your speaking, I wanna do more storytelling. And maybe I can make content like that where there's a video that's all in Spanish, but I could add subtitles and maybe make the transcript available to Patreon supporters so you can study that if you want. Like, we'll see how it goes, but it's, I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. So thank you all for your patience. Thank you all for your support. I am sorry that I have not been around as much. It's just been super hard to even explain <laughs> what's been going on. But now that I'm kind of, now that I have a lot of clarity, it's a lot easier to finally bring you back up to speed. So let me know any thoughts that you have. Let me know how you're all doing. There are so many of you. I mean, there's hundreds of you who over the years left me so many comments to the point where like I knew I knew your names, I knew what you do, I knew what languages you're learning. I, I, I've been there for the ups and downs that you've shared. And it's like, there's so many of you that I would just love to hear from you and know like, how are you doing? How, how are your languages going? But how's life going? Like, I may not be able to respond to everybody depending on how many comments come in, um, but I read every single comment and I would just love to hear from you. So please let me know and if you haven't already, maybe hit that bell icon. I never ask for that. That is the first time in my 10 years on YouTube. <laughs> but it's just like, it, it is clear that not everybody gets notified. So if you do wanna like see when my new videos come out, I guess you could do that. But yeah, all right, everybody. Sending you all big hugs, lots of positivity, and I'll see you soon.